This week's surprise is Black Arthur Chili, and it comes from the guys at Burlap and Barrel, who we were lucky enough to have visit the farm last week to taste things, but also talk about the history of the company, how they got started, how they support smallholder farmers around the world, and the amazing range of products that they have. And so give that a listen if you want to find out more. But the best way to find out what this surprise is all about is to listen to Ethan from Burlap and Barrel. I'll leave it to Ethan. I don't know. I'm going to start back thousands of years ago. Chilies are native to the Americas. I mean, we're in a we're in a we're on a farm. Um, all chilies co- are, can be traced back to the the geography between uh, Mexico and Bolivia. Um, they made their way to Europe and then to the Middle East, uh, literally with Columbus. He, he, there was a botanist on board the ship who carried the first pepper seeds, chili pepper seeds to Spain. Um, and, and they made their way to Turkey and they've been a huge part of Middle Eastern cuisine writ large and, and Turkish cuisine in particular for uh, hundreds of years. Um, but, but they don't have a history that goes back beyond that. So, I mean, in thinking about cuisines and flavors and how are people developing those those sort of taste profiles, um, a lot of that has happened fairly recently. Um, an Urfa chili is the same variety as an Aleppo pepper, which is sort of its better known cousin. Uh, Aleppo peppers are red, medium hot, pretty sweet, usually sun dried. And an Urfa chili, you start with the same pepper. It's, I don't know, about six inches long, something like that with a little elbow in it. Um, it's not a particularly hot pepper, although the, the membrane does have some heat, but heat is not the primary flavor. Um, the peppers are picked fresh, uh, chopped up, usually in the field or right nearby. Um, the seeds are removed and these strips of peppers are laid out on tarps, uh, on tarps and under tarps um, to sweat. It's the desert. It's like 110 degrees in July and August when when they're harvesting. Um, and because they're, they're under these sheets of Traditionally, it would have been fabric. Now it's mostly plastic. Uh, they they oxidize. They sort of roast in the heat. Um, they turn from red to this very deep red or orange. It looks black. Um, and then the last step is a stone grinding process with a little salt and oil to, to break them up and and create not quite a paste texture, but but hold them together. Um, and that oxidation, that that uh, curing process brings out those flavors that you were talking about, that kind of deep, savory, raisin, coffee, malt uh, flavor profile. Um, and and there are there are analogs all around the world from soy sauce to miso to uh, mole. Right. Lots of cuisines find ways to get at that depth of flavor. And, and this is what they use in Turkey. I and mean, funny, you should talk about vegan options in particular. There's a. Um, a, a traditional dish from the part of Turkey, from Urfa or from southeastern Turkey, uh, which was historically made with raw meat. It was called çiğ um, But the Turkish government, as part of a public health effort, uh, basically eliminated the raw meat version of the dish and replaced it with a bulgur wheat uh, alternative. But this pepper is a key ingredient in this sort of vegan fake meat uh, because it gives you some of that uh, rich, deep, almost meaty flavor. Um, and so you'll get these little, they look like meatballs, but they're made of tomato paste and, and bulgur wheat and urfa chili. Um, you get them wrapped in a lettuce leaf with pomegranate molasses as like a pretty common street food in Istanbul, but especially in Southeastern Turkey. 